1985, a year in which the University of Alabama Crimson Tide would rejoin the nation's elite in college football. Although Alabama ended 1984 with a 5-6 record, completing a frustrating year with an upset win over Auburn, that victory gave the 1985 team newfound confidence as the Tide prepared for a year in which coach Ray Perkins would guide his team to a 9-2-1 record. The Crimson Tide of Alabama would win five of its last six games to finish among the nation's top teams. When you think football, particularly winning football, the University of Alabama comes quickly to mind. And so it was no surprise that once again the eyes of the nation were focused on Alabama when ABC television opened its 1985 college football presentations with Ray Perkins' Crimson Tide taking on the Bulldogs of Georgia between the hedges in Athens. It was the 25th anniversary of ABC's weekly coverage of NCAA football. That first telecast on September 17, 1960, also featured Alabama versus Georgia. The Crimson Tide winning that one 21 to six. It would not be easy Labor Day night, 1985, in front of 82,000 mostly Georgia partisans. Alabama came into the opener with serious questions about its team following the Crimson Tide's first losing season in 25 years. The defense, led by the likes of All-America linebacker Cornelius Bennett, thought to be sound. But the offense did not have a proven quarterback, and halfback Kerry Goode had not seen action in a year, having suffered a serious knee injury in the 1984 season opener against Boston College. It was Alabama's plan to take on Georgia with a conservative run-oriented offense and a tough defense. The plan worked for over 59 of the 60 minutes. However, with just 50 seconds to play, a breakdown in the kicking game gave Georgia an apparent victory. One could not say that Alabama had a no-name quarterback. Mike Shula's famous father, Don, had given him one of the most highly recognized names in football. But no Shula ever faced a more difficult assignment than the one facing Mike, as Alabama stood 71 yards from victory. It took but 35 seconds. After barely missing Goode down the sideline, Shula connected on four straight passes. First to Greg Richardson, first down at the Alabama 45. From there, Shula finds new wide receiver Al Bell for 25 more. Another first down at the Georgia 30. The Crimson Tide offensive line giving Shula plenty of time to pass. He hits Richardson again for 13. Another first down at the Bulldog 17. Now Alabama in position for a possible tying three-pointer. But Shula has other ideas. 19 seconds remaining. He calls Bell's number again. Bell finds an opening in the middle of the field. Shula finds him, hits him, and Bell dances into the end zone to complete the miraculous comeback with just 15 seconds on the Sanford Stadium clock. Shula had directed a once-in-a-lifetime comeback. Not only would this drive propel Alabama to a season opening win over Georgia, but it would boost the team's confidence for the home opener against eventual Southwest Conference and Cotton Bowl champion Texas A&M. A game that would be the Crimson Tide's best defensive performance of the season. Their second straight win of 1985, a convincing 23-10 victory over Jackie Sherrill's Aggies. Led by linebacker Wayne Davis's 24 tackle game, the Alabama defense held the high-powered A&M offense to 89 yards rushing and 298 yards total offense. Offensively for the Tide, the foot of junior place kicker Van Tiffin produced three field goals, including a record-setting 57-yarder in the second quarter. Tiffin also played a big part in the fourth quarter surge, giving the Crimson Tide the lead for good when he connected on 40 and 51 yard field goals. Senior fullback Craig Turner, breaking this 32 yard touchdown run with 107 left in the game, led Alabama on the ground with 114 yards in 21 carries. However, it was an expensive victory. Linebacker Cornelius Bennett injured, lost to the Tide for a month. 
Alabama made its 1985 Bryant-Denny Stadium debut a successful one as Shula and company put points on the scoreboard the first five times they had the football en route to a 45-10 win over Cincinnati. In all, 74 Alabama players saw action and freshman halfback Bobby Humphrey led the team in rushing, gaining 106 yards on 13 carries. Van Tiffen helped Alabama set the Southeastern Conference record for consecutive points after touchdowns when he connected on the school's 131st straight in the second quarter. Next, it was back to SEC play and a trip to Vanderbilt to avenge the 1984 homecoming loss to the Commodores. Again, it was Tiffin's toe gaining the headlines as the Crimson Tide broke Oklahoma's NCAA record for consecutive points after touchdowns at 135. Tiffin's third quarter extra point gave Alabama the record 136 straight conversions from 1981 to 1985. Halfback Bobby Humphrey scoring here on a five yard run became the first Crimson Tide freshman to rush for 100 yard games back to back when he carried the ball 21 times against Vanderbilt for a team high 127 yards. With 17 points second and third quarters, Alabama improved its record to 4-0, 2-0 in the SEC. Next, a major challenge on the road against undefeated Penn State. Alabama playing in its fifth stadium in five games, this time in front of 85,000 partisan fans and a national television audience. The Tide jumped out to a 7-0 first quarter lead when Mike Shula connected on this 19-yard touchdown pass to emerging star Al Bell to cap a 12-play, 81-yard scoring drive. Four Massimo Manka field goals moved Penn State to a 12-7 lead early in the fourth quarter. Crimson Tide place kicker Van Tiffin answered with a 45-yard three-pointer with 8.26 remaining in the game to bring Alabama within two at 12-10. But it was Nittany Lion backup quarterback Matt Kisner subbing for the injured John Schaefer who found tight end Brian Sarbling alone in the end zone to give the Lions a 19-10 lead. Mike Shula then drove the tie to its second touchdown as he hit tight end Thornton Chandler. But Alabama's last ditch effort to win came up just short. Penn State held on for a 19-17 victory. Coach Ray Perkins would say it was an impressive victory for a team that should go a long, long way this year. Prophetic words. Penn State finished undefeated, playing Oklahoma for the national championship. Back home for the Tide to meet Tennessee, the eventual SEC champions and always a tough opponent for Alabama. At season's end, Alabama's 1985 schedule would be called by the NCAA the second toughest in the nation. The Volunteers flying high coming into the game after a big win over Auburn touted Heisman Trophy quarterback candidate Tony Robinson and a potent passing attack. But this hit in the third quarter ended Robinson's collegiate career when the defense led by linebacker Cornelius Bennett, nose guard Kurt Jarvis put the shifty Tennessee signal caller out with a knee injury. After Tennessee had marched to an opening score in the second quarter, the Crimson Tide offense answered. Senior fullback Craig Turner dove one yard over the top of the ball defense to tie at seven. Turner's touchdown set up by the running of freshman halfback Murray Hill. And this 44-yard bomb from Mike Shula to wide receiver Greg Richardson. Following three field goals by Tennessee's Carlos Rivez, Shula connected with freshman halfback Bobby Humphrey on a 19-yard scoring pass. This put the Crimson Tide within striking distance at 16-14 with 11-26 to play in the game. Twice in the final 11 minutes, Alabama marched into volunteer territory, twice turned away with no points. The second straight two-point loss would be Alabama's last loss of 1985. Heading to Memphis State, the University of Alabama football team was at the crossroads. Memphis State offered one of the top defensive units in the country. The Crimson Tide offense would be severely tested by the Tiger big play stock troops. But Mike Shula passed the test with flying colors. No college team has a greater quarterback tradition than Alabama. A dozen times various Tide quarterbacks have thrown three touchdown passes in a single game. In this game, Mike Shula would pass the likes of Starr, Namath, Stabler in the Alabama record book. Four times, Shula found receivers for scores, including this 21-yard touchdown pass to Greg Richardson to give the Tide a 7-0 first quarter lead. 
In the third quarter, Shula returned with scoring passes to Al Bell and Clay Whitehurst, putting the game out of reach. And to lock it, he connected with Bobby Humphrey in the final quarter for a two-yard score to put Alabama back on the winning track, 28-9 victory over Memphis State. Against Memphis State, Shula completed 24 of 34 passes for 367 yards, his first 300-yard performance of his Alabama career. Not only did Shula have a great day passing against the Tigers, but the Crimson Tide secondary picked off five Memphis State passes as Alabama improved to 5-2 heading into the Mississippi State game. Homecoming at Tuscaloosa saw the Crimson Tide offense click on all cylinders as the Tide outscored the visiting Bulldogs 44-28. Freshman halfback Gene Jokes became the first ever Crimson Tider to break the 100-yard barrier in both rushing and receiving in a single game. After failing on its first possession, Alabama scored on its next five drives to take a commanding 31-6 halftime lead. The scoring including a 43-yard field goal by Van Tiffen, two touchdown runs by Bobby Humphrey, and two touchdown passes Mike Shula to Al Bell. In the second half, Alabama drove the ball 80 yards in six plays as fullback Doug Allen scored on this three-yard run to give the Crimson Tide an insurmountable 38-6 cushion. The win moved Alabama to a 6-2 record overall, 3-1 in the SEC. Back on the road again, this time to face old foe, the LSU Bayou Bengals at Tiger Stadium. ABC cameras watched Alabama take its second possession of the game, 87 yards for a score. Halfback Gene Jump swept 33 yards for the touchdown and gave the Crimson Tide a 7-0 halftime lead. But back-to-back -back big plays by LSU in the third quarter gave the Tigers a 14-7 edge. A 49-yard run by Gary James and a 67-yard pass from Jeff Wickersham to Wendell Davis did the damage. Playing against a fired-up Tiger defense, Alabama took its final possession of the day, 68 yards for the tying score. This fourth down and 19 play, one that covered 29 yards from Mike Shula to Al Bell, kept the miraculous drive alive. One play later, Shula pitched to Jokes, who turned and found the Alabama quarterback in the LSU end zone for the 14-14 tie. The Crimson Tide back in Tuscaloosa for its final 1985 home field appearance turned away an upset threat from Southern Mississippi, 24-13. 12 Alabama seniors, John Han, Craig Turner, Thornton Chandler, David Gilmer, John McIntosh, Todd Roper, Larry Roberts, Bob Roberts, Brent Soule, Hardy Walker, Joe Smith, and Don Horstead making their final Bryant-Denny appearance a most successful one. However, it took fourth quarter touchdowns by Angelo Stafford on this four-yard scoring pass from Mike Shula and a four-yard touchdown run by Gene Jelks to preserve the win. The Crimson tied now with a 7-2-1 record heading into the Auburn game. Alabama had defeated cross-state rival Auburn 17-15 to end the disappointing 1984 season on a high note. But some of the glory of that win was diminished by a general feeling the Tigers had lost the game more than the Crimson Tide had won it. There was no question about Alabama's win in 1985, although it did take every tick of the clock to do it. In one of the most exciting games ever played, a national television audience and a packed Legion Field audience treated to an outstanding performance by both teams, the Tide and the Tigers. When it was all over, Alabama had captured the golden anniversary game in a contest that had added more luster to one of the nation's great college football rivalries. Alabama moved out to a 10-0 first quarter lead when Craig Turner kept a 94-yard drive, the team's longest of the year, with a one-yard touchdown run. Van Tiffen added a 26-yard field goal. In the second quarter, Auburn closed to 16-10 when Tiffin's 32 and 42-yard field goals were countered by a seven-yard scoring run by Heisman Trophy winner Bo Jackson and a 49-yard field goal by Chris Johnson. After a scoreless third quarter, the teams played one of the most memorable quarters in the history of college football. Auburn took its first lead of the game at 17-16 when Jackson scored on a one-yard run with 7-0-3 to play. In the fight between two of the South's football heavyweights, freshman halfback Gene Jump swung momentum back to the Crimson Tide with a 74-yard sprint for six. The two-point pass failed, 
giving Alabama a 22-17 lead. Back came Auburn with fullback Reggie Ware scoring from the one to move Auburn in front 23-22. The critical two-point conversion pass battered away by Cornelius Bennett. Only 57 seconds remain. Think back to the Georgia game. A game everyone had called a once-in-a-lifetime comeback. Could the Crimson Tide do it one more time? First of all, a bad situation got worse. Following an incomplete pass, Mike Shula is sacked by the Auburn defense. The Crimson Tide, third down and 18 at the Alabama 12. 37 seconds to play. After the sack, Alabama used its last timeout to stare down the barrel to ponder the next two plays. The first was this pass to Gene Jelks for 16 of the needed 18. And just as importantly, Jelks got out of bounds to stop the clock. On fourth down and two, Alabama went to its big play man, Al Bell, as expected. But in a way, that was unexpected. In the round, Bell ran for the first down, getting a big block from Shula, moving the ball to the Crimson Tide 46 and a first down. Alabama had new life, but only 21 seconds remain. Six seconds expired on this incomplete pass. 15 ticks on the clock. Shula dropped back, looked and looked, and found Greg Richardson over the middle. Richardson caught the ball, racing across the field, getting out of bounds, stopping the clock with six seconds remaining. Van Tiffin into the ball game to try a 52-yard field goal for the win. Following the win over the Tigers, the Crimson Tide accepted the invitation to the Aloha Bowl to play the Southern California Trojans. Crimson Tide coach Ray Perkins' message to his players was short and sweet. We're here to win a football game, number one. Secondly, we're here to have a good time. Alabama players took time off from their practice schedule to visit the USS Arizona Memorial at Pearl Harbor. Other tours, including a walk down the beach at Waikiki to see the sights and sounds of Honolulu on the island of Oahu. On the hill above Pearl Harbor, Aloha Stadium. And the purpose of the trip, the game. The first half, riddled by penalties, ending in a 3-3 tie as Van Tiffen and Trojan place kicker Don Schaefer traded field goals. In the second half, Alabama went back to the basics, scored three touchdowns for the team's ninth victory of the year. A one-yard touchdown run by Craig Turner gave the Tide the lead for good in the third quarter at 10-3. A 24-yard pass from Mike Shula to Clay Whitehurst. And a 14-yard reverse by Al Bell provided Alabama scoring plays, which gave the team a season-ending win. For their efforts, Linebacker Cornelius Bennett was chosen the game's outstanding defensive player and Gene Jelks, the outstanding offensive player. Alabama's 24-3 win over Southern Cal gave the school its nation-leading 38th bowl appearance and tied the Crimson Tide with the Trojans for the most bowl victories with 21.
The 9-2-1 season surpassed what the public and media had predicted for Alabama, but Crimson Tide head coach Ray Perkins knew all along this team was special. He saw the months of hard work from spring training through the summer program paying off through the season, ending with a victory celebration in Hawaii. Back on campus, the university's football complex, one of the finest in the nation, opened in mid-July. The two-story building, equipped with the most modern features, houses a weight room, conditioning room, training room, locker rooms, sauna bath, players and coaches' lounges, administrative and coaches' offices, meeting rooms, and a media studio covering some 66,000 square feet. In 1986, facilities will get even better. The indoor football complex will open in the fall with a practice field and a running track and indoor tennis courts. The most important aspect of 1986, however, will take place on the playing field. Bryant-Denny Stadium in Tuscaloosa and Legion Field in Birmingham and on the road at Gainesville, Knoxville and Starkville. Based on the 1985 performance, one can say Bama's back in a big way, ready to challenge once again for a national championship. People make tradition. And that's the way it is at Alabama, as the tradition continues.